Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Blog Podcast. Today is Friday, February 8th, 2019. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's college basketball, NBA, and NHL games. Look ahead to tomorrow's games. Do my latest mock draft, my latest mock bracket, and my best bet of the day. All right. The college hoops we go. There was a lot of games yesterday. And... A lot of interesting results, obviously. St. Francis, Pennsylvania defeats Central Connecticut State 90-85. Central, I'm sorry, uh, St. Francis, Pennsylvania goes to 11-11. Central Connecticut drops to 10-14. Sacred Heart defeats Fairleigh Dickinson 69-63. Sacred Heart goes to 11-13. Fairleigh Dickinson drops to 11-12. Number 12, Houston defeats UCF 77-68. A huge win for Houston. They're 22-1. UCF 16 and 5. Number 25 Cincinnati defeats Memphis 69 64. Big win for Cincinnati. They're 20 and 3. Memphis is 13 and 10. Green Bay defeats Cleveland State 82 65. Green Bay is 12 and 12. Cleveland State 6 and 19. Northeastern defeats William and Mary 72 to 60. Northeastern 14 and 9. William and Mary 9 and 15. Charleston defeats Delaware 83 75. Charleston 19 and 6. Delaware 14 and 11. Youngstown State defeats Milwaukee 72 71. Youngstown 9 and 16. Milwaukee 9 and 15. Robert Morris defeats Bryan 72-59. Robert Morris 13-11. Bryan 8-14. Wright State defeats Oakland 76-62. Wright State 14-11. Oakland 11-14. Radford defeats Hampton 101-98 in overtime. Radford 17-7. Hampton is 10-12. Presbyterian defeats UNC Asheville 67-44. Presbyterian 14-11. UNC Asheville 3-21. Hofstra defeats Alon 102-61. Hofstra 20-4. Alon is 8 and 17. Chattanooga defeats VMI 71 to 70. Chattanooga 11 and 14. VMI 7 and 16. Drexel defeats UNC Wilmington 69 57. Drexel 12 and 13. UNC Wilmington 8 and 17. Campbell defeats High Point. I'm sorry, other way around. High Point defeats Campbell 57 56. High Point's 13 10, and so is Campbell. St. Francis Brooklyn defeats Wagner 51 44. St. Francis Brooklyn 14 and 12. Wagner is 10 and 12. Ohio State defeats Penn State 74 70. Ohio State 15 and 7. Penn State 8 and 15. Gardner Webb defeats Longwood 89 88 in overtime. Weber 15 and 9. Longwood 13 and 13. Little Rock defeats Troy 84 to 70. Little Rock 8 and 15. Troy 10 and 12. UNC Greensboro defeats Samford 75 67. Greensboro 21 and 3. Samford 14 and 11. North Kentucky defeats Detroit Mercy 97-65. North Kentucky 19-6. Detroit 9-15. LU Brooklyn defeats Mount St. Mary 77-62. LU Brooklyn 11-12. Mount St. Mary's 5-19. Monmouth defeats St. Peter's 53-51. Monmouth 9-16. St. Peter's 6-16. Wofford defeats East Tennessee State 78-76. Wofford 20-4. East Tennessee State 19-6. Western Illinois de- gets defeated by Purdue Fort Wayne 70 70- 964 is Purdue Fort Wayne goes to 16 and 10. Western Illinois goes to 8 and 16. Furman defeats Western Carolina 64 45. Furman 19 and 5. West Carolina 6 and 19. Middle Tennessee defeats Charlotte 71 to 53. Middle Tennessee 8 and 16. Charlotte 5 and 18. Winthrop defeats Charleston Southern 76 72. Winthrop 15 and 8. Charleston 10 and 12. Belmont defeats Eastern Kentucky. 83-65, Belmont, 18-4, Eastern Kentucky, 10-14. Tennessee State defeats Morehead State, 81-80 in double overtime. Tennessee State, 8-15, Morehead State, 9-15. Washington State upsets Arizona State, 91-70. Bad loss for Bob Hurley's team. Washington State goes to 9-14, Arizona State drops to 15-7. Oral Roberts defeats Denver, 78-65, Oral Roberts, 9-17, Denver, 7-17. Murray State defeats Eastern Illinois, 86-55. Murray 18 and 4, Eastern Illinois 13 and 11. North Texas defeats Marshall 78 51. North Texas 20 and 4, Marshall 13 and 11. Texas State defeats Appalachian State 74 71. Texas State 18 and 5, Appalachian State 8 and 15. UTSA defeats FIU 100 to 67. UTSA 14 and 10. FIU is 14 and 10 as well. South Alabama defeats Arkansas State 70 to 62. South Alabama 12 and 11, Arkansas State 10 and 13. Omaha defeats South Dakota 107-102 in overtime. Omaha 14-9, South Dakota 
9 and 14. Texas Arlington defeats Coastal Carolina 74 54. Texas Arlington 11 and 12. Coastal Carolina 12 and 10. Old Dominion defeats UAB 70 to 59. Old Dominion 19 to 6. UAB 14 and 10. Austin P defeats SAU Edwardsville 80 to 45. Austin P 17 and 7. SAU Edwardsville 8 and 15. Idaho State defeats Northern Arizona 81 79. Idaho State 9 and 12. Northern Arizona 7 and 15. Southern Utah defeats Weber State 65 53. Southern Utah 11 and 10. Weber 14 and 9. Tennessee Martin defeats Jacksonville State 66 64. Tennessee Martin 7 15. Jacksonville State 16 and 8. Southeast Missouri State defeats Tennessee Tech 71 to 66 in overtime. Southeast Missouri State 8 and 16. Tennessee Tech drops to 7 and 17. Number four, Gonzaga defeats San Francisco 92-62. Gonzaga rolls again. They're 22-2. San Francisco 17-6. Number 20, Iowa upsets Indiana 77-72. That's an upset because Indiana was favored. Iowa 18-5. Indiana 13-10. Montana State defeats Eastern Washington 74-66. Montana State 10-12. Eastern Washington 8-14. Texas Rio Grande defeats Grand Canyon 72-69. Texas Rio Grande 13 and 12, Grand Canyon 14 and 8. That's a bit of a surprise in the WAC. FAU defeats UTEP 61-48. FAU 14 and 10, UTEP 7 and 15. Montana defeats Idaho 159, Montana 16 and 6, Idaho 4 and 18. South Florida defeats SMU 67-66, an impressive win for Brian Gregory's team. They're the surprise of the AAC so far. I said that on yesterday's podcast, and they continue to do so. They're 16-6, SMU is 12-10. South Florida, dark horse candidate for an at-large, but remain to be seen if they make my list or not in my pre-bracket. But if anything, South Florida's in all likelihood heading to the NIT. Washington defeats Arizona 67-60. Washington 19 and 4, Arizona 14 and 9. Western Kentucky defeats Rice 90 to 85 in double overtime. Western Kentucky 14 and 10, Rice 9 and 15. Northern Colorado defeats Portland State 80 to 62. Northern Colorado 15 and 8, Portland State 9 and 13. UC Davis defeats Cal Poly 63 53. UC Davis 7 and 14, Cal Poly 5 and 16. Hawaii defeats Long Beach State 77 to 70. Hawaii 14 and 8, Long Beach State 8 and 16. Stanford Upsets Oregon State 83 to 60. Stanford 12 and 10. Oregon State 14 and 8. New Mexico State defeats Cal State Bakersfield 71 70 in overtime. New Mexico State 19 and 4. Bakersfield 15 and 8. Santa Clara defeats Pepperdine 79 71. Santa Clara 13 and 11. Pepperdine 11 and 13. Cal Baptist defeats Chicago State 94 to 44. Cal Baptist 12 and 10, Chicago State 3 and 21. San Diego defeats Loyola Marymount 65 to 63. San Diego 16 and 8. Loyola Marymount 16 and 8. BYU defeats Portland 83-48. BYU 15 and 10, Portland 7 and 18. And last but not least, St. Mary's defeats Pacific 78-66. St. Mary's 15 and 9, Pacific 13 and 12. Tonight's slate is small because it's Friday night. 7 o'clock on ESPN2, you have St. Louis at St. Joseph. St. Louis is a two and a half point favorite. I think they're going to win and they're going to cover. They are the better team. St. Joe's has been down in conference play. Columbia at Hartford, Penn at Brown, Siena at Manhattan, Princeton at Yale, Kennebec at Iona, Canisius at Ryder, and ESPNU, Ryder's favorite by nine. This is tough. Ryder's been the best team in the Metro Atlantic all year. Canisius has been, eh, they're okay, I guess. I'm going to say Ryder wins. I won't be stunned if Canisius covers, but I'm going to say Ryder wins by double digits, so I, I'm calling a Ryder cover, but I think it will end up being like a 13-point game rather than like a 18-point game, per se. Cornell against Dartmouth, Nagra and Marist. Georgia Southern at UL Monroe. Georgia State at Louisiana, 9 o'clock on ESPN2. Louisiana is a one-point favorite. Georgia State's been great all year. And that conference is not that bad. You have some good teams. Texas State, Georgia Southern, Georgia State. 
Louisiana's okay. I'd say them and UL Monroe are like that third tier. I think Texas State's the best in that conference, and then the two Georgia schools, and then the UL Monroe, and then uh, Louisiana are like right there on that third tier. So give me Georgia State to pull off the very slim upset. They're a one-point dog on the road. I just think they're the better team. And then Kent State at Akron, 9 o'clock ESPN U. Akron's a four-point favorite. Golden Flashes have been great all year. I th- I think they're going to pull this one off on the road as an outright four-point dog. So give me Kent State outright as the four-point dog there. NBA, six games last night. Some good ones, some snoozers. The Pacers defeat the Clippers 116-92. to Another big win for the Pacers. They're 4-4 and without Oladipo. They originally 0-4, and then they go to 4-4. Four and four. As Indiana goes to 36-19, and Clippers drop to 30-26. and Bojan Bogdanovic, 29 points and 7 boards. Miles Turner at 17. Darren Collison and Thaddeus Young each had 14. And off the bench, Corey Joseph had 13. Meanwhile, for the Clippers... Montrezl Harrell at 19, Daniel Gallinari at 12, and Jonathan Motley and Lou Williams off the bench each had 10. The Magic defeat the Timberwolves 122-112. to Orlando takes advantage of Minnesota looking ahead a little bit as they go to 23-32. Minnesota drops to 25-29. and Terrence Ross, 32 points off the bench. Meanwhile, their starters, Nick Vucevic had 21 and 10, Aaron Gordon at 19, and Evan Fournier at 18. The Raptors defeat the Hawks 119-101. The Hawks had the lead in this game, but the Raptors come from behind and win. They're 40 and 16. Atlanta's 18 and 36. Pascal Siakam, a career high 33 points and 14 boards. Serge Ibaka had 12. Kyle Lowry at 13. Fred Van Vliet had 30. Danny Green had 12. Norman Powell off the bench at 11. Kawhi Leonard didn't play due to left knee soreness. And meanwhile for Atlanta, John Collins had 12. Tarion Prince had 19. Dwayne Dedman had 10. Trey Young had 19. Their bench didn't do much. Oh, I forgot to give out the Timberwolves team stats. Meanwhile, the players, I mean. Carl Anthony Towns had 27 and 11. Andrew Wiggins had 23. Taj Gibson had 10. Josh Okogie at 13. Off the bench, Dario Sarge at 17. And Isaiah Cannon had 13. Jeff Teague did not play coach's decision. That's crazy. I remember when they signed him, they really had high hopes for him. I guess uh, they're just not fans anymore of him. The Lakers defeat the Celtics 129-128. On a buzzer beater by Rajon Rondo as the Lakers go to 28 and 27. Boston drops to 35 and 20. LeBron James, 28 points and 12 boards and 12 assists. Kyle Kuzma at 25. Javon McGain, Rajon Rondo each had 17. Brandon Ingram had 11. Off the bench, Catavius Caldwell Pope at 17. Lance Stevenson had 14. We all for Boston. Jason Tatum is playing a lot better of late. 22 points and 10 boards. Kyrie Irving had 24 with 8 assists and 7 boards. Al Horford had 12. Off the bench, Daniel Thies had 20. Jalen Brown had 18. And Terry Rozier had 19. So a very disappointing loss for the Celtics after winning 5 straight after that home loss to Golden State. The Thunder defeat the Grizzlies 117-95. OKC is 35-19. Memphis is 22-34. Paul George continues his career year, 27 points, 5 boards, 4 assists. Jeremy Grant had 20. Stephen Adams had 11. Russell Westbrook, 15 points, 13 boards, 15 assists. Terrence Ferguson had 10. Off the bench, Dennis Schroeder had 16. Move off for Memphis, Jaron Jackson Jr., 27 points and 7 boards. Ian Rabb had 15. Mike Conley had 15 off the bench with 16 points. Bruno Cabocolo and with 10 points and 5 boards. Yuta Wantumbi. That's a funky name. The Trailblazers defeat the Spurs 127 to 118. Good win for Portland. They're 33 and 21. San Antonio drops to 32 and 25. CJ McCollum had 30 with 9 boards. Damian Lillard had 24 and 9 assists. 
Yosef Nurkic had 22 with 6 assists. Alfred Aminu had 11 with 8 boards off the bench. John Lehman had, or I'm sorry, Jake Lehman had 13. Rodney Hood in his first game as a Blazer had 14. San Antonio and DeMar DeRozan, 35, 6, and 6. Brent Forbes had 11. LaMarcus Aldridge had, in his, I believe it has to be his at least fourth or fifth year since he joined the Spurs. 17 and 10 in a reunion game with his former team. Rudy Gay had 25, and their bench didn't do anything. Tonight's slate, you have eight games. 7 o'clock, you have the Knicks at the Pistons on ESPN. You have the Nuggets at the 76ers. I'm not sure who's on the call of this game. I believe it's going to be Mark Jones and either Doris Burke or Hebe Brown. I'm going to assume Doris Burke because that's who's been doing the games with Mark Jones on Fridays. And I doubt it's the Mike Breen group because they have, obviously, Thunder Rockets tomorrow night. So I think it's Mark Jones and Doris Burke. Not 100% sure. Philly's favored by four and a half. I'm going to take the Sixers to win and cover their new team with Tobias Harris and their new bench additions and Mike Scott and Bojan Marjanovic. I think they are poised to go on a run and, and give the Bucks a run for their money for the one seed in the East. So give me the 76ers at home against the Nuggets team coming off a bad loss in Brooklyn. The Cavaliers at the Wizards, 7-30, the Bulls at the Nets. The return of Karis Levert, so that's a great story for Brooklyn. They need him back if they want to make the playoffs, in my opinion. The Bucks at the Mavericks at 8.30. 9.30 ESPN, the Timberwolves at the Pelicans. New Orleans is favored by 6. I'm taking Minnesota to cover, but New Orleans to win. Because Anthony Davis is playing, but I think the line's too high. It makes sense. That that line's high because Minnesota's on the second of a back-to-back. Davis is playing. But I don't think the Pelicans are that good of a team. They traded away Nikola Meritic. And I think that, worst case scenario, the the Pelicans win by six. But I'm going to say that the Pelicans win, but the Timberwolves cover. And at 10 o'clock, you have the Heat at the Kings. NHL. Big slate last night. The Hurricanes defeat the Sabres 6-5 in overtime. By the way, there was a record eight overtime games last night. Or, or, I'm sorry, tied a record. Carolina's 27-21-6. Buffalo 26-20-7. Lumbro started the game with two goals and assists. Tabu Taravina. Number two started the game with two goals. Jeff Skinner. Number three started the game with two assists. Sebastian Ajo. The Panthers defeat the Penguins 3-2 in overtime. The Panthers are 22-22-8. Pittsburgh's 28-19-7. Number one star of the game with a goal and assist. Mike Matheson. Number two star of the game with two assists. Alexander Barkov. Number three star of the game with the goal. Colton Skivier. The Islanders defeat the Devils 2-1 in the shootout. As the Islanders go to 31-16-6. Devils 20-25-8. Number one star of the game. Didn't have a point. He scored in the fourth round of the shootout, though, but that's Josh Bailey. Number two start of the game with 27 saves on 28 shots, Corey Schneider. Number three start of the game with the goal, Kevin Rooney. The Kings defeat the Flyers 3-2 in a shootout. Philly's winning streak comes to an end. Kings are 23-27-4, Philly 24-23-7. Number one start of the game with 30 saves on... 32 shots, Jonathan Quick. Number two star of the game with a goal, Sean Couturier. Number three star of the game with a goal, Austin Wagner. The Capitals defeat the Avalanche 4-3 in overtime. Washington improves to 30-18-6. Colorado 22-22-9. Number one star of the game with two goals and an assist, Evgeny Kuznetsov. And I believe Kuznetsov scored the overtime winner as well. Number two star of the game with the goal of the assist. Matt Niskanen, number three star of the game with the goal. Miko Rontanen. The Canadians defeat the Jets 5-2. An impressive win for Montreal as they go to 31-18-6. Winnipeg is 34-17-3. and 
Number one started the game with two goals and two assists. Jonathan Druin, number two, started the game with a goal and three assists. Philip Deneau. And the number three started the game with two assists. Brendan Gallagher. The Senators defeat the Ducks 4 nothing as the Sens and their losing streak and the Ducks continue to slide. Ottawa 20, 29, and 5. Anaheim 21, 25, and 9. Number one started the game with 45 saves on 45 shots. Andres Nielsen. Number two started the game with two goals. Matt DeShane, number three, started the game with a goal and assist. Mark Stone. The Golden Knights defeat the Red Wings 4 to 3 as Vegas improves to 31, 21, and 4. Detroit 21, 26, and 7. Number one started the game with a goal and assist. William Carlson, number two, started the game with two goals. Jonathan Marshall, number three, started the game with 36 saves. On uh, 39 shots, Mark Andre Fleury. The Blues defeat the Lightnings 1 0 in overtime. St. Louis 25 22 and 5. What a turnaround for the Blues, by the way. And Tampa Bay 39 11 and 4. Number one started the game with 38 saves on 39 shots. Andre Vasilevsky. Number two started the game with 32 saves on 32 shots. Jordan Bingington, who's been a catalyst on this run by the Blues to get back in the race in the Western Conference. And the number three started the game with a goal, Braden Shen. The Predators defeat the Stars 3-2 in overtime. Good win for Nashville, 32, or I'm sorry, 33-19-4. Dallas, 28-21-5. Number one started the game with a goal and assist, Ryan Johansson. Number two started the game with a goal and assist, Victor Vreeton. Number three started the game with the goal, Craig Smith. The Oilers defeat the Wild for the win. A much needed win for the Oilers to end their losing streak. They are 24 25 and 5. Minnesota 26 23 and 5. Number one started the game with the goal, Leon Dreisettle. Number two started the game with two assists, Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Number three started the game with the goal, Joel Erickson Eck. The Blackhawks defeat the Canucks 4 3 in overtime. Blackhawks winners of six straight 22 24 and 9. Vancouver, 24-24-7. Number one star of the game with a goal, Jonathan Taves. Number two star of the game with two goals, Alex DeBrinkett. Number three star of the game with three assists, Dylan Strom. The Sharks defeat the Flames 5-2. Good win for San Jose. They are 36-16-7. Calgary, 34-15-5. Number one star of the game with two goals and assists, Evander Kim. Number two star of the game with 36 saves on 38 shots, Martin Jones. Number three star of the game with two goals and assists, Thomas Hurdle. The Blue Jackets beat the Coyotes 4-2. Columbus goes to 30-20-3. Arizona 23-26-5. Number one started the game with the goal and an assist. Josh Anderson. Number two started the game with the goal and an assist. Jordan Ostarelli. And the number three started the game with the goal, David Savard. And only one game on the slate tonight, and that is the Rangers hosting the Hurricanes, in which will be the Rangers' 25-year anniversary celebration of their last Stanley Cup victory, which took place in 1994. And that game is slated to go off at 8 o'clock, with the ceremony going off at 6.30. Should be fun at the Garden tonight, Mark Messier and... Ryan Leach and Adam Graves, Mike Ricker, all the legends that were on that team. So it should be a fun celebration at the Garden tonight. Next, I'm going to do my NFL mock draft. It's my fifth edition of it. There are a lot of changes in this. I'm going to start with number one and go down to 32, as I do each and every time. And with the first pick in the fifth edition of my mock draft, the Arizona Cardinals select Nick Bosa, defensive end, Ohio State. Last mock draft, I had Quentin Williams here, but Bosa is the best player in this draft and certainly has a chance to be a multi-time All-Pro player. The Cardinals have needs everywhere on their roster other than their quarterback, and getting a possible franchise player to lead your pass rush to go with Chandler Jones is very enticing. With the second pick in my fifth edition of the mock draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Josh Allen, defensive end, outside linebacker, Kentucky. Allen was the key cog to a Wildcats defense, which rode the team to a phenomenal season. 
His draft stock has risen dramatically throughout the season, and the 49ers are a logical fit because they need an edge rusher. With the third pick in my fifth edition of the mock draft, the New York Jets select Quinnen Williams, defensive tackle, Alabama. Williams was an intimidating presence in the middle of the Tide's defensive line in the past few seasons. The Jets have a ton of needs so they can build around Sam Darnold, and the defensive line is somewhere where they have talent but hasn't panned out, and putting Williams alongside Leonard Williams would be fun. With the fourth pick in my fifth mock draft, the Oakland Raiders select Rashawn Gary, defensive end, Michigan. The Raiders begin to build their pass rush by selecting Gary, who didn't really live up to his number one overall prospect ranking he was given in high school. If Gary produces in the pros, this will turn out to be a great selection as they would finally replace Khalil Mack. With the fifth pick in my fifth mock draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Jonah Williams, offensive tackle, Alabama. Williams was the best lineman perhaps in the country this season and did a great job protecting to attack of Iloa. The Bucks' bigger needs lie on defense, but passing up on a possible future all-pro offensive lineman to protect Jameis Winston would not be great. With the sixth pick in my fifth mock draft, the New York Giants select Dwayne Haskins, quarterback, Ohio State. Eli Manning's days of being a good starting quarterback in the NFL are over, and his future is uncertain at this point. Haskins handing the ball off to Saquon Barkley and throwing it to Odell Beckham Jr. would only jumpstart his career and would be fun to watch. With the seventh pick of my fifth mock draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Drew Locke, quarterback, Missouri. I had Kyler Murray here the last few mocks, but Locke has drawn some looks from Tom Coughlin in the Jags front office. Locke has a very good arm, and he had a good finish to his final collegiate season. With the 8th pick of my 5th mock draft, the Detroit Lions select Claylin Farrell, defensive end, Clemson. The Lions have a need at the pass rush position if Iggy Ants said the parts in free agency, so this would make sense. Dabo Sweeney has three talented defensive linemen slated to go in the first round, and Farrell in this mock is off the board first. With the ninth pick of my fifth mock draft, the Buffalo Bills select Jawan Taylor, offensive tackle, Florida. The Bills' biggest need is to get protection for Josh Allen. Taylor is one of the fast risers due to his good performance in the Senior Bowl, and he would help Josh Allen in the Bills' offensive line. With the tenth pick of my fifth mock draft, the Denver Broncos select Kyler Murray, quarterback, Oklahoma. I've had Drew Locke here the past few mocks, but here I decided to mock Murray, who the Broncos like. Murray declared for the draft, and I believe he'll stick to football and end up a top 10 pick. With the 11th pick of my fifth mock draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Greedy Williams, cornerback, LSU. Williams is the best corner in the draft, and the Bengals snagging him here would be a win. They have an aging defense, and Williams would provide much-needed energy and youth to that secondary. With the 12th pick in my fifth mock draft, the Green Bay Packers select Devin White, linebacker, LSU. White was the best linebacker in the country this past season, and he would be a fine selection. Clay Matthews is aging, and someone as talented as White would be a fine replacement. With the 13th pick in the fifth mock draft, the Miami Dolphins select Daniel Jones, quarterback, Duke. I do think the Dolphins like next year's quarterback class better, but they seem ready to move on from Ryan Tannehill. Jones is a very fast riser thanks to a strong showing at the Senior Bowl, and I could see Miami taking a chance here. With the 14th pick of my fifth mock draft, the Falcons select Jeffrey Simmons, defensive tackle, Mississippi State. Simmons is someone else that has risen fast of late. The Falcons could have a need at the position if Gardy Jarrett departs a free agency on that defensive line. With the 15th pick of my 5th mock draft, the Washington Redskins select Montez Sweat, defensive end, Mississippi State. Some might feel that this is a reach, but Sweat's stock has risen recently after a good senior bowl. Sweat posted double-digit sacks two years in a row, and he is a solid run defender, too. 
With the 16th pick of my fifth mock draft, the Carolina Panthers select Yanni Kajuste, offensive tackle, West Virginia. Cam Newton has had trouble staying healthy the last few seasons, so offensive line should be the Panthers' priority. Kajuste is all over the place on people's mock boards, but here I have him mocked as a mid-first rounder. With the 17th pick of my fifth mock draft, the Cleveland Browns select Cody Ford, offensive tackle, Oklahoma. Guess what? The Browns actually have a good roster, so they don't have any obvious needs. Where they can use some help is offensive line as their tackles aren't good and Ford can end up as a good left tackle to help protect Baker Mayfield. With the 18th pick of my 5th mock draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Ed Oliver, defensive tackle, Houston. Oliver was once projected a top 5 pick and his stock has dropped dramatically, so there's a chance Oliver is a steal. The Vikings can use a defensive tackle, especially if Shelton Richardson walks in free agency. With the 19th pick of my 5th mock draft, the Tennessee Titans select Byron Murphy, quarterback, Washington. Murphy falling this far would be a steal for the Titans. They do not have a need in the secondary with Malcolm Butler and Kevin Byard still around, but it would not be a bad idea to get a great young quarter in there. With the 20th pick in my 5th mock draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Marquise Brown, wide receiver, Oklahoma. The Steelers have a huge possible need at wide receiver with an Antonio Brown exit looming more likely by the day. Brown would be a nice fit to replace Brown in that offense. With the 21st pick in my fifth mock draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Deontay Thompson, safety, Alabama. Thompson would be a steal dropping this far. Legion of Boom is gone in the Emerald City, and drafting the best safety in the draft would be great for Pete Carroll's young secondary. With the 22nd pick of my fifth mock draft, the Baltimore Ravens select DK Metcalf, wide receiver, Ole Miss. Metcalf is someone who could wind up a steal from this spot. This would be a nice weapon for Lamar Jackson, who needs a downfield threat guy to help his development. With the 23rd pick of my 5th mock draft, the Houston Texans select Greg Little, offensive tackle, Ole Miss. Cornerback is somewhere where the Texans do have a need, but Deshaun Watson badly needs protection and Little would help the problem. The Texans had perhaps the worst offensive line in football this past season, and that should be their top priority this offseason. With the 24th pick of my... Fifth mock draft, the Oakland Raiders select DeAndre Baker, cornerback, Georgia. This is from the Chicago Bears in the Cole Mack trade. The Raiders have a ton of young players and they're secondary and none of them panned out yet. Baker is one of the best three corners in the draft, which makes this a fine selection by John Gruden and Mike Maycock. With the 25th pick of my fifth mock draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Dexter Lawrence, defensive tackle, Clemson. Here's the second of the three Clemson defensive linemen to come off the board. He reminds me of current Eagle Fletcher Cox, and the thought of those two on the interior is scary. With the 26th pick of my fifth mock draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Christian Wilkins, defensive tackle, Clemson. Here's the third player from the Clemson defensive line to be taken in the mock draft. Wilkins can be an immediate starter for Frank Reich on the defense, which needs some more playmakers on the line. With the 27th pick of my fifth mock draft, the Oakland Raiders select Josh Jacobs, running back, Alabama. This pick is from the Dallas Cowboys from the Amari Cooper trade. The Raiders' offensive playmakers are aging, and Jacobs would be a solid fit. He draws comparisons to Alvin Kamara, and he would be an upgrade over Doug Martin and Marshawn Lynch. With the 28th pick of my fifth mock draft, the Los Angeles Chargers select Dalton Risner, offensive tackle, Kansas State. Phillip Rivers has shown zero signs of decline of late, and some protection on the offensive line would be smart with some of that unit aging. A defensive player would have been a wise choice too, but so would Risner. With the 29th pick of my 5th mock draft, the Kansas City Chiefs select Jachai Polite, defensive end outside linebacker, Florida. 
Polite is someone coming off a breakthrough year in college and his draft stock rose in light of it. The Chiefs need some high upside players on their defense, especially versatile players. With the 30th pick of my fifth mock draft, the Green Bay Packers select TJ Hokinson, tight end, Iowa. This pick comes from the New Orleans Saints and where the Saints traded up it to select Marcus Davenport last year. Jimmy Graham isn't the same player he once was in New Orleans, so the Packers should snag a fast-rising tight end in Hokinson. He's a good blocker and has drawn comparisons to George Kittle of the 49ers. With the 31st pick of my fifth mock draft, the Los Angeles Rams select the Sear Ederly Safety, Delaware. Adderley is a fast riser thanks to a strong showing at the Senior Bowl. The Rams may have a need at safety if Lamarcus Joyner departs in free agency, then Adderley could be worth a shot here. With the 32nd pick of my fifth mock draft, the New England Patriots select Noah Fant, tight end, Iowa. Rob Gronkowski's future is very uncertain at this point with all the injuries he's dealt with, so the Pats take his possible successor in Fant. He is the best tight end in the draft and would have an instant impact in Bill Belichick's offense. Next up, I'm going to do my mock bracket as tomorrow the selection committee will reveal their top 16 as of right now. So I'll reveal my whole bracket as of right now. I'm going to go in order from 1 to 68, and I'll say the region and then the team. With the first overall seed in the East region, I have the Duke Blue Devils. No doubt about it, they're the best team in the country. Yeah, they're not number one, but they're certainly the best. They're the best player in the country, Zion Williamson. And, yeah, they could lose tomorrow, but they still have opportunities to make up for it. They have a game against Carolina, and they have some other big ACC games as well. And they've had some other big wins. But for right now, it's Duke. But if they lose to Virginia tomorrow, then the team I have is the number two overall seed. And your one seed in the Midwest, the Tennessee Volunteers. They were projected to be a top 10 team this year, but nobody thought that they'd be number one in the AP poll right now. That's credit to Rick Barnes. And the great coaching job he has done this year. And obviously Grant Williams, who's in play for the National Player of the Year alongside Williamson from Duke. The number three overall seed and your number one seed in the West, the Gonzaga Bulldogs. They're yet another dominant force. They beat Duke earlier in the year. They lost to Tennessee, but no shame in losing to Tennessee. They lost to Carolina. No shame in losing to Carolina and Chapel Hill. But this Gonzaga team is sensational, and they deserve a number one seed. With the number four overall seed and your number one seed in the South, the Virginia Cavaliers. Yes, this could change down to a two if they lose tomorrow night, or it can go up and, dare I say, leapfrog Duke with, depending on what kind of win they have tomorrow. So right now I have my last one seed, the Virginia Cavaliers. My two seeds. My two seed in the South, the Kentucky Wildcats. This team has been phenomenal ever since after it lost to Duke on opening night. This team hasn't looked back. Yeah, they lost a game at Seton Hall at the Garden, but they probably could have won that game, and then they... Could have won at Alabama, too. But credit to Alabama, they pulled away in that game in Tuscaloosa. My two seed in the Midwest is the Michigan Wolverines. They've had a pretty good year. They have a win over North Carolina. They have that big win at Villanova. They have some big conference wins as well. And they have an opportunity this weekend to avenge one of their losses, which was their loss to... Wisconsin, in which they host Wisconsin this weekend. My two seed in the East is the LSU Tigers. This team has been a surprise for me this year. I thought they'd be good, but I think they'd be this good. But look at that. I have them projected as a two seed. That is sensational. They had a bad loss to Arkansas recently. 
but they have some very good wins on the resume. And I'd be surprised if LSU wasn't in the top 16 tomorrow. My last number two seed, and it's coming out of the West, and that's the North Carolina Tar Heels. They got off to a slowish start by their standards. But ever since they lost at home to Louisville, they've been on a roll. They avenged that Louisville loss with the win at the Yum Center. And this is a good team. And they have some opportunities coming up. They play against Virginia next week. Of course, they have to play Stuke two more times. So this is a dark horse candidate to get a one seed, in my opinion. And they have to be mentioned among the national title contenders. And I'm surprised nobody's talking about them where they're a darn good team led by Luke May and youngsters Masir Little and Kobe White. They've both been sensational as well. My three seeds in the Midwest, the Louisville Cardinals. They've been a monster surprise in year one under Chris Mack. I think Mack has to be the favorite for the ACC Coach of the Year right now. My three seed in the East, the Michigan State Spartans. This team was on pace to be a one seed, but it dropped a couple unnecessary games, including one at Illinois. And Illinois is the worst team in the Big Ten this year. And yes, they lost Joshua Langford even before conference play, I think. But that loss is starting to hurt them even more. And from the West, I have the Iowa Hawkeyes. They've been pretty good this year. They have some big wins and some bad losses, too. And my three seed from the South is the Kansas State Wildcats. This team should be the favorite to win the Pac-12 right now. They're pretty good. They have some nice wins on the year. My four seeds. My four seed in the East is the Villanova Wildcats. Bad losses are going to come back and haunt them, such as home against Furman. And that's why they're a four seed and not a three or a two. My fourth seed in the Midwest is the Kansas Jayhawks. This team has been a disappointment since it lost their best player, Nazabuki. And then one of their other players is taking a personal leave. This program's in turmoil right now, and I don't think they're going to win the Big 12. But that Tennessee win is going to loom large, and that's why I think they'll probably get a higher seed than folks expect. My fourth seed in the South is the Wisconsin Badgers who are winners of six straight games. This team, I think, is the third best team in the Big Ten. And Ethan Happ has to be considered among the favorites for the Big Ten Player of the Year. Number four in the West is the Marquette Golden Eagles. They're a pretty good team in the Big East. Their two conference losses, ironically, have come against St. John's. I find that a little weird. My five seeds. In the South, the Houston Cougars, who currently have one loss, but I have them as only a five seed because I think the selection committee is going to be down on the lower conferences. I could be wrong. Especially if the teams above Houston drop unnecessary games. My five seed in the West is the Auburn Tigers. They're a pretty good team this year. My five seed in the East is the Baylor Bears. They have been a huge surprise in the Big 12. A lot of people thought they were going to be bad. Obviously taking advantage of disappointing teams in that conference like West Virginia and Texas. But good for Baylor finding themselves here right now. My five seed in the Midwest is the Nevada Wolfpack. The reason why I have yet another one loss team as a five seed is because unlike Houston, well, Houston doesn't have a quote unquote bad loss. Nevada has that terrible blowout loss to New Mexico. I think that it's going to cost them two seed lines, maybe even three seed lines. But if they run the table, then I probably would project them to be more of a two or three seed rather than a five seed because I don't think that Nevada's going to run the table. I think there's more trap games in there that they're not prepared for. 
by six seeds. In the south, the Washington Huskies, they're the best team in the Pac-12 right now, undefeated in conference play. They have a big one this weekend at Arizona State. Six seed in the east, the Virginia Tech Hokies. Virginia Tech's been a weird team. If they didn't lose to Penn State early in the year, they would have been higher on this list. My six seed in the Midwest, the Iowa State Cyclones, another somewhat surprise in the Big 12. Six seed in the, in the West, I have the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Chris Beard doing yet another phenomenal job. My seven seeds. In the East, the Maryland Terrapins. I think the Big Ten's a mess outside of the Big Three. I'm including Wisconsin in the conversation with Michigan State and Michigan now with their six straight wins. But the middle group is a mess. With the likes of Maryland, and I'm going to get to a couple more on this list. My seventh seed in the Midwest is the NC State Wolfpack. I probably have them overseeded. I originally had them as a nine, but I did some maneuvering because I think that I had them originally as a nine because of that terrible loss against Virginia Tech in which they only scored 24 points in. Number 27 on the list, but they're my 17 in the West. The Purdue Boilermakers, they're among the quote-unquote mess in the middle of the Big Ten. They have some good wins and some weird losses this year. And my 17 in the South, the St. John's Red Storm. I had them projected as an 8 last time I did this. Now I have them projected as a 7. That was a huge win. At Marquette the other day, which I think secured them a bid. They have to beat Villanova to double insure it. And what could be a revenge spot for them at the Garden in a couple of weeks. My eight seeds. In the West, the Florida State Seminoles. In the Midwest, the Syracuse Orange. Two ACC schools. Florida State just beat Syracuse. That's why they're ahead of Syracuse on the list. My eight seed in the East is the Cincinnati Bearcats. And my eight seed in the South is the Mississippi State Bulldogs. In which the SEC has a middle mess too. They have the top tier teams in Tennessee and Kentucky. And I think LSU is kind of on a tier of their own. And then that next bunch of teams I say is a, like Auburn and Mississippi State. And there's a couple more on this list that I'm going to get to. My nine seeds, the West, the Buffalo Bulls. Yes, I still think they're going to be an at-large when it's all said and done because they have some big wins on their resume, such as at Syracuse and at West Virginia. Yes, West Virginia's not West Virginia like we thought they were, but that's still a meaningful win for the Bulls, in my opinion. The ninth seed of the South, the Wofford Terriers. Yes, I think Wofford's an at-large team. They have some monster wins, including last night at East Tennessee State. My 19 in the East, the Ole Miss Rebels. A huge surprise in the SEC this year. And in the Midwest, the Arizona State Sun Devils. Yes, that was a bad loss against Washington State, but a lot of huge wins, including Kansas when Kansas still had Azubuki. And among some others, will keep Arizona State in the picture. And that's what happens when you have some big wins and those with the bad losses cancel out. And if they beat Washington this weekend, then I think they're sure to be in. My 10 seeds in the East, the TCU Horn Frogs. They're, I think, on the bubble right now. As well as my 10 seed in the South and the... Minnesota Golden Gophers. And then 10 seed in the West, the Arkansas Razorbacks, who have played themselves back in the conversation with good play in conference play. South Carolina is doing well in the SEC, but I think they have too many losses. So they didn't make the list. They'll probably be in the NIT. And then my 10 seed in the Midwest is uh, Davidson who I think will end up as an at-large candidate with a couple more big wins in conference play. My 11 seeds, 
In the South, the Ohio State Buckeyes. In the Midwest, the UCF Knights. In the play-in game in the East, VCU and Temple. Then the play-in game in the West, Utah State. Yes, Utah State I have as an at-large against Alabama as my last team in. Alabama's played themselves into it. They have the win over Kentucky. They went toe-to-toe with Tennessee. And they have some other good wins as well. My 12 seeds. In the East, UNC Greensboro. In the West, Hofstra. In the Midwest, Bowling Green. Yes, Bowling Green. I have them winning the auto bid as of right now. They, they're they 8-1 and one in conference play. But with Buffalo's big wins, they are at large. So I have Bowling Green as the auto bid from the MAC, And as the 12th seed in the South, Lipscomb. 13 seeds. In the Midwest, Murray State. In the South, Vermont. In the East, Loyola, Chicago. And in the West, New Mexico State. 14 seeds. In the Midwest, Radford. The South, Little Dominion. In the East, Princeton. And in the West, UC Irvine. 15 seeds. In the Midwest, South Dakota State. In the West, Texas State. In the East, Bucknell. In the South, Northern Kentucky. In your 16 seeds. Montana in the West, Ryder in the Midwest, Norfolk and Robert Morris in the playing game in the East, and the playing game in the South, Sam Houston State and Prairie View. Some random nuggets to the bracket before I move on to my best bet of the day. I have in the East region, I have Loyola Chicago against Villanova as one of my projected matchups. So Sister Claire against the reigning champs. That's just a fun thing. And then there are some scenarios where they move teams around because then they would have to be playing conference opponents in round of 32, possibly, so I had to do some juggling and whatnot. Syracuse against Arizona State in the Midwest as a first-round game is intriguing because it's Bobby Hurley against Jim Beheim, and there's just some intrigue because Bobby Hurley used to coach Buffalo, and... Jim Beheim doesn't like scheduling Buffalo. So there's like some Buffalo and past with Bobby Hurley against Jim Beheim there. Another fun one would be round of 32. Kansas State against Washington. Two teams that are playing very well in conference play right now. I just think that would be pretty fun. Another interesting round of 32 projected game would be Purdue against North Carolina. They have Carson Edwards on one side with Purdue, and on the other side with Carolina, they have Luke May. So two of the better veterans in college basketball going head-to-head there. Duke against Cincinnati would be a projected round of 32 game in the East. Obviously, Duke and Zion against... A good defensive team in Cincinnati. And then round the 32, you have a rematch between Florida State and Gonzaga in the West. Possible Sweet 16 matchup in the Midwest would be Kansas against Tennessee. That would be a rematch and a chance for Tennessee to avenge a loss. And Kansas is worse now, obviously, than when Tennessee originally played them. A projected Elite Eight game would be Gonzaga against North Carolina. Obviously, these two teams faced off earlier in the year. And then in the national title game back in 2017, a possible Elite Eight game would be Duke against Michigan State in the East. Obviously, these two teams play every few years in the Champions Classic. In the beginning of the season. And in the South region, Virginia against Wisconsin in the Sweet 16 would be fun. Those two teams played each other earlier in the year. So there's a lot of intrigue within some of these projected matchups. Now I'm going to do my best bet brought to you by FanDuel. College Hoops, NBA, and some tennis you have the Wizards, the Nets, the Warriors, Harvard, Thomas Fabiano, Marius Coppell, Jan Leonard Struff, and Prajnes Gunaswaran. Wagering a dollar, 
with odds of plus three twenty eight to win a dollar or I'm sorry, three dollars and twenty eight cents with a payout of four dollars and twenty eight cents. That's it for the podcast today. I'll be back tomorrow recapping College Troops NBA NHL preview those games that are being played tomorrow. Pick the big college basketball games. And obviously tomorrow night you have Thunder Rockets on ABC. We'll go over that. And we'll break any other news that happens before I do tomorrow's podcast. Hope you guys have a great day, everybody.